Good morning, September 2nd, and it is 6 a.m. Have our coffee here. We are just gonna go out and dump our heads offshore this morning. It's Sunday today, and it'll be three weeks on Monday for our three heads. So we're going out to dump, doing the proper thing. Cleaning all the debris off the bridle been sitting in the water for almost three weeks now. I'd like to introduce you to our third member of the crew, Mr. Otto Pilot. Otto Van Helm. Yes, Otto Van Helm. He's now steering. Yes. I steer with one finger. <laughs> I drink coffee at some time. This okay. autopilot is a great help. We went our three miles offshore to dump our heads, and now we're heading back. And we'll make some water on the way back. Just to the right of our last putting down our anchor, we are in six meters of water. Now we've drifted a little bit, but we're in six meters of water, and we have 45.3 meters of road out. The visibility is excellent in the water. I'm just gonna go dive the anchor and make sure it's well dug in. A good practice for us to have. So I dive the anchor because I check lots of other people's anchors and a lot of them are not dug in. Then you have dragging issues. Yeah. This guy here, the anchor was just laying on its side, but he had a lot of chain out. That's probably what's holding him. And all the coral that's around him. If it starts to drag, maybe it'll hook onto some coral. Thumbs up, you gotta hold. We let out about 10 meters extra of road, so we're just gonna check the sailboat behind us because we did move 10 meters to our starboard when we anchored this time. So a little bit in front of him, a little bit more. We're just gonna check that we're not on top of his anchor now. Andrew's just gonna go find it, snorkel and find it. Anchoring is not just dropping your anchor. It's about checking to make sure that you're okay with the boats around you. This piece of garbage we better pick up. Looks like their anchor is about 10 meters away from us. Good morning. We are out of homemade deodorant. So I am going to show you how I make it on the boat. Gather all the ingredients up first. I have coconut oil. I'm going to use this jar as my melting jar because I don't have a mason jar. And there's the coconut oil. We will put in equal amounts of baking soda or you can use cornstarch or arrowroot powder, but I only have baking soda. Beeswax. Tea tree oil and some lavender oil. The beeswax is so it can harden and I can put it into a deodorant stick. This is the deodorant stick I will be using. The little bit left here in the deodorant stick, I'm just going to pick out with the knife and I will put it into the coconut oil to melt it. The coconut oil is already melted because it's so hot in the cabin. In order to be able to pour some deodorant when it's liquid into this, I have to, into the stick, I have to push it back down so that it makes room. And now it's 
down. There's the baking soda into the glass jar, the same amount as the coconut. Pour the coconut oil into the jar. And the baking soda. A tablespoon of beeswax. Beeswax pellets. They will help harden the deodorant. Stir it up. There, it's all in there. We'll stir it up. Let's see the beeswax in there. And we'll just wait till the beeswax melts. And then I will add the essential oil, about a tablespoon of tea tree and a little bit of lavender. They both have disinfecting properties. This is the sum of the soap that I made and brought with me from Canada. It's all natural no chemicals in it so it's safe for the coral reefs and I also make my own sunscreen too that's not toxic on the coral reefs melting it over a double boiler so we don't get any burning the last one I made in Canada had shea butter in it, it would be nice to have a couple tablespoons of shea butter in here it's nice and smooth on the skin I might have to go find some in Grenada if they have it. I didn't bring it with me. It's been about five minutes and the beeswax is getting soft now. It's almost at the melting point. I'm going to add a tablespoon of tea tree oil. A tablespoon of lavender oil. Stir it up and if you're just making separate ones for the guys you could use a different smelling essence. You could use sandalwood or cedar smell. You want the tea tree because it is disinfecting. So now I'm going to pour it into the stick carefully. We're going to start pouring it in. close to the top can bang it down and it's liquid there I'll just top it off a little bit more there it is filled up it might sink a bit as it's hardening so I'll top up more I have a little bit more in here and I could use melt that next time whoa now we have waves coming in hopefully it doesn't topple over Andrew can tell you about this deodorant and his cycling jersey and sometimes I can ride all day and Jersey still doesn't stink, which is pretty good for me. Yeah, usually it does. And there's his jersey over here. Because he went for a ride yesterday to Grenville. It was a tough ride too. He in in the heat, an over three hour bike ride, and his jersey does not smell. Just smell under these armpits, people. <laughs> it doesn't smell. Now I just have to wait for it to harden and then I can go for a swim. It's warm and it is only 9.15 in the morning. I'll put this one away, this leftover deodorant for later. I'll store it in the locker and then we're good to go. The deodorant is all finished. I went for a swim and it hardened. Here you go, solid. And I'll push it up a little bit and show you. It's nice and solid. I added a little more on the top because it had concave down once it had finished hardening. And it's ready to go. Fresh deodorant. Non-toxic. Won't cause cancer. There you go. It is raining so hard out here. You can't even see St. George's. Wow. Hey Andrew, lucky I just got in from my swim. I would have been soaking wet out there. 
<laughs> There's so much water coming off the boat, I think we would have filled our water tanks. Yeah, probably. If we collected it. Yeah. Okay, this piece I got from a rigging store. It's a piece of a furler. So what I'm going to do is put this on the diamond stays to keep them from chafing. They are rubbing against each other and hopefully I can tie them sort of like a spokes on a track bike wheel. So I'm going to cut a piece about this big four times, one for each stay. Okay. I'm going to cut three more pieces like this. Four pieces, four stays. I'll show you what they look like on the stay. The other stay will be like that, so now they'll be separated. They won't chafe, hopefully. And then I'll tie them with the string. Here I am, I'm looking at the water again. Here I am, I guess I made another Hopefully what I've just finished doing is going to head off a potential problem, relieve us of another worry, and make our life better. We don't want our stays breaking in the middle of the night, a 30 knot wind or a big rain squall. We don't want the mass coming down, which is a very bad thing. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wave Riders. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Yeah. Bye well, from Grenada. Till next time, scuba diving. Oh. Ooh, bye. Oh. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm soaring really fast. Yeah. Remember to like and share, and thanks for watching. Leanne's going to come and say her bit too. Here she comes. She's a fast swimmer.